I thought I'd have a quick crack at explaining necessity versus sufficiency, particularly as it pertains to maths. Um, if you Google necessity or sufficiency, you'll end up with these definitions um, or something very similar to them. The problem here is that really all that these are doing is throwing more words at you, required, adequate. Um, so I think actually the best way to explain what these words mean um, is through examples. Now, before we do that, I know what people are saying. They're going, ah, oh, Drew, you're a maths YouTuber. What are you doing giving us definitions of words and threatening to expand on the definitions of words and practice using definitions of words? This is a maths channel. Can we, I dropped English GCSE, thanks. Um, can we leave that there? There is a reason that I'm doing this, of course. There's a reason that I do most things. Um, and that's because uh, if, if, you, if you're if you aiming to go to a top 10 university in, in the UK for maths, you're almost certainly going to have to take what's called a TMUA paper, the Test for Mathematics University um, Aptitude. Um, all of the top 10 universities ask for you to take this. Um, it's it's a double paper, and paper two has questions that look like this, which I, if you want to, you can pause the video and give it a more serious go. Um, but they also, uh, here's another question, um, and here's another question. Um, and, and here's another question. And you can see in all of these questions, you've got this necessary sufficient, necessarily, necessary sufficient, it's all over these. Um, and, and paper two of, of 2MUA is, is, is 20 questions, multiple choice, and probably about six or seven of them on average are just this. Um, so it's it's pretty necessary, and uh, it's, a, it's a good good use of that word considering the video, it's pretty necessary that you get good at this. Um, otherwise, that paper is not going to go very well. And I did say at the start that almost all top 10 university um, universities in the UK will use this paper, and they almost all do. The only exception is, is Oxford, which doesn't. Oxford uses what's called its MAT paper. And here's a question from the MAT paper 2021. Um, and as we can see down here at the bottom, it starts talking about necessary and sufficient conditions. So there's basically no way to avoid it. Um, and in my experience, uh, I haven't been teaching that long, but in my experience, people um, who are learning this tend not to be very good at it, um, at least not intuitively or initially. Um, I think with practice, you can certainly get good, but but um, but yeah. Now, we're not going to deal with these questions in this video for two reasons. Partly because if we try to deal with these types of questions, the maths in these questions is actually quite hard on its own. So we we get all caught up and distracted by the maths and we wouldn't be focusing hard enough on what these words actually mean. And also, because I've done all of these questions on this channel elsewhere, you just need to look up the TMUA videos. Um, and I've done every single TMUA paper that's ever been released. So all of these questions are done on this channel somewhere. So what we'll actually do in this video is we'll um, go through these words, but we'll use uh, real life examples first. And I'll, I'll show you what these words mean and how to apply it and how they're applied. And then we'll do some simple math examples. And then when you've got through the whole video, hopefully you'll be ready to take on these more complicated mathematical examples. Um, but let's start with some with some, some real life non-maths examples of here. Um, is it necessary or sufficient to bring a passport to the airport to get on an international flight is the first question. Now, things can be necessary, things can be sufficient, things can be both, and things can be neither. So there's actually four options here. I've worded the questions if there are two, but there's actually four options, both, neither, one or the other. Um, now, it is necessary to bring a passport to get on an international flight. It's necessary because you will not be allowed on the flight without one, right? The removal of that passport stops you from being on the flight at all. So it is a necessary condition that you bring one. It is not a sufficient condition because sufficiency talks about something else. Sufficiency says, is it enough? And it's not enough. You can't just walk into an airport with a passport and end up in, you know, in Brazil that afternoon. Like, you also need to pay for the flight, turn up on time, you need a visa for particular countries. Lots of other things need to happen as well. So it's necessary because if you don't bring it, you absolutely will not be going anywhere. But it's not sufficient because lots of other things need to be ticked as well. And here's another example. Is it necessary or sufficient, or both or neither, to be a twin in order to have a sibling? Um, so... Okay, I, I won't give you too much time on this because we are just doing the examples. It's not necessary, right? There are probably lots of people watching this video who have siblings but are not a twin. So it's not necessary. It doesn't stop you from having a sibling just because you're not a twin. Um, so there are people with siblings who who don't have who are not twins. Um, so as soon as we can think of a counterexample, we're done, essentially. If we go back to the first example, if there was something else you could bring aside from a passport that would do the same job, 
then you don't need a passport. It's not necessary. As, as soon as you think of another case, i.e. just regular siblings, you don't need to be a twin anymore. Um, it's, it, is, it is sufficient, though. If you are a twin, then you do have a sibling. Right? So this is the opposite case of the passport story because it's not necessary, but it is sufficient. If you are a twin, then you have a sibling, at least one sibling, um, or at least had, I guess. We can get into other discussions there. But it, it, for this case, we'll just say it's not necessary, but it is sufficient. Okay, so is playing cricket necessary or sufficient to understand all of the laws of cricket? Um, it's clearly not necessary. Playing cricket is not necessary to understand the laws. There are lots of people who just watch cricket or who just know the laws um, because they used to play cricket. Um, so, and that applies to any sport, right? So it's not a necessary step that you actually play the sport. Like you can just know the rules. On the flip side, it's also not sufficient. You can't just play cricket and then go, oh, now I know all the rules, right? Like it doesn't work like that. You need other stuff. You need to read the laws of cricket and you need to uh, see them happen and so on. Lots of people play cricket and don't understand all the laws. Um, there are some very particular laws in cricket that people just uh, ignore or wave away or just don't know and they play it all the time. And that's fine. Like people enjoy themselves playing. It doesn't mean they know all the laws. So this is actually not necessary or sufficient. This is neither. Things can be neither. Um, is being a bat necessary or sufficient to being a flying at mammal? Um, it is necessary. Uh, the reason that it's necessary is because bats are the only mammal that can fly. I googled this before I put it on the screen, so I do know that that is actually true. Um, so it is necessary. It's the only thing that can do it. Just like the passport is the only thing that does the passport's job. This is the only thing. A bat is the only thing that does that is flies and is a mammal. Um, it is also sufficient because if you are a bat, you can fly and you are, are a mammal. So you're done. Like you can do the flying bit. Um, maybe we can get into some philosophical discussions here about whether or not, you know, maybe it's a disabled bat that can't actually fly, but it's still a bat. So maybe it's not sufficient. Maybe you have to be an abled bodied bat. But, you know, when you're working with real life examples, uh, things can get a bit contentious. But on the whole, we'll just brush past that and we'll, we'll understand these ideas. So necessary, something it is required for the other thing to happen. Sufficiency is, is that all that's required? Is that enough? Or is there other things that also need ticking? Um, so here are some examples. Um, you can actually pause the video at this point um, and you can have a think about these. Um, and I'll go through them in a second, and then we'll get into some maths examples straight after this. But I would encourage you to have a quick think about these just briefly. Um, so, okay, I hope you pause the video there. Let's go through these. Um, so, being Chris Hemsworth is not necessary to be beautiful. Um, there are lots of other people in the world or other things in the world that are beautiful, so it's not necessary to be him. It is sufficient, as we can all agree, if you are Chris Hemsworth, you are beautiful. So, it's sufficient but non necessary. Number two, is being an adult necessary or sufficient to be a parent? Um, it is not necessary. There are lots of non-adults who are parents, um, so it's not necessary that you're a pe that you're an adult. Is it sufficient? It's not sufficient either, because there are lots of adults who are not parents. Um, so the fact that I can point to people who aren't adults but are parents makes it not necessary, and the fact that I can point to people who are adults but are not parents um, makes it not sufficient. So you, you've got to be careful in which way around you do this. But again, I think it's just practice that makes this happen. Is being from Birmingham necessary or sufficient to be British? Well, it's sufficient because if you're from Birmingham, you're British because Birmingham is in the UK. Uh, but it's not necessary. You could be from Leeds or um, London or whatever. Is being a parent necessary or sufficient to be a daughter? Uh, to ha sorry, to have a daughter. Um, it's uh, necessary to be a parent because parents have children. Um, and, uh, and non-parents don't. So it's necessary that you are a parent. It's not sufficient though. There are lots of parents who just have sons or one son or whatever. Um, so it's necessary but not sufficient in this case. Is being an adult necessary or sufficient to be over 18? Uh, we'll talk about this in the UK, I guess. Um, it's, it's necessary because you're defined to be an adult if you're over 18. So it's necessary that you're over 18 to be an adult. It's also sufficient because it's the only condition you need to meet to be called an adult. There is nothing else you need to do. You just need to be 18 years old and you're called an adult. Um, so that's necessary and sufficient. Ne when, when you get conditions that are necessary and sufficient, it's almost, it's usually a definitional thing that you see. It's just something that's, you know, adults in the UK are defined to be over 18. Um, so it's almost usually a definitional thing when you see things that are necessary and sufficient. Okay. Um, 
Let's get into some actual math examples then. So I, I talked before about how these questions are always applied in the TMUA papers and the math papers. Um, they apply it to maths problems, obviously. So, so let's apply this to some maths issues. So is having four equal straight sides necessary or sufficient to be a square? Um, now it's necessary, right? It's necessary because the definition of a square is a pol uh, quadrilateral with four equal straight sides. I guess that straight bit is in the quadrilateral. Um, and four right angles. So it's necessary because that's half of the definition, but it's not sufficient because you need the other half. You need the four right angles bit. So that's necessary. It's necessary to have four equal straight sides, but it's not sufficient because you need something else as well. So just like the passport and the airport, this one is, right? You need to bring four equal straight sides to have any hope of being a square, but you also need to bring some other stuff, your four right angles. Then you can make it to be a square. Is being a prime necessary or sufficient to being a positive integer? Um, I mean, at this point, again, pause the video if you want to have a quick think about it first. Um, so it's not necessary um, there, right? Like, it's clearly not necessary. There's a positive integer that isn't prime. Uh, again, counterexamples is, is, is the way that you break necessity. You just think of something else that can get you there. Four can get me a positive integer and it's not prime. It is sufficient, though. If you are a prime, then you are a positive integer. All the primes are positive integers. So it's sufficient. You're not going to need to be anything else. But it's not necessary because you could just be something else. Um, so yeah, is being prime necessary or sufficient to have two factors? M notice what I said before about the definitional thing. Hopefully those of you who have gone to school um, and done maths have learned the definition of a prime as numbers that have two factors. A lot of people teach the definition of you know, divisible by one in itself. Not so good. Use the definition prime has two factors and it, it, it and because that's a definitional thing this one ends up being necessary and sufficient it's necessary because the only numbers with two factors are prime like if you have two factors you're prime that's the definition and it's sufficient because there are no um because there are no um numbers that aren't prime that uh because primes all have the two factors like every single one of them um so you're never going to point to a prime um and it doesn't have two factors so it's it's therefore sufficient um, so here are a bunch of maths examples um, that you can apply this to. We'll end the video after we do these. Um, but yeah, more than welcome to pause the video and have a go at these really quickly. And I'll get to them now. Is a number being less than 12 necessary or sufficient to be less than 20? Well, it's sufficient. I can say that much. It's sufficient because if you're less than 12, you're definitely less than 20. Um, so it's definitely going to work. It's not necessary because you could be 19 and 19 is less than 20. So it's not necessary to be less than 12. You could be a bit bigger and still do this, but it is sufficient. If you're less than 12, you'll definitely meet this criteria. Is being a square necessary or sufficient to being a rectangle? Um, well, it's sufficient because actually a square is just a fancy rectangle, right? With all four sides the same. So it's definitely sufficient. It's not necessary because there are rectangles that are not squares, right? Um, so it's not necessary, but it is sufficient. Um, is being odd necessary or sufficient to be prime? Well, it's not sufficient because there are lots of odds that are not primes. You've also got to have two factors, like 15, which has four factors. Um, but also it's not necessary because you could be two. Um, so it's not necessary to be odd. It's not sufficient to be odd. Primes are something else entirely. So this is one of those ones that's not and not. Um, is being less than 20 necessary or sufficient to be more than 15? Um, it's not necessary because you could be 25 and that's still more than 15. So it's not necessary to be this first condition. Um, it's not sufficient either because a number that meets this condition is 14, for instance, and that doesn't meet this condition. So it's not sufficient on its own to be less than 20. It's not necessary because you could be 25 and still meet this. So cool. Is being a quadrilateral necessary or sufficient to be a square? Very similar to the one up here, I guess. Um, it's necessary for sure because quadrilaterals are because squares are special types of quadrilaterals. So it is definitely necessary. It's definitely not sufficient because there are loads of quadrilaterals that are not um, squares. Um, I don't know what I was typing here. What on earth is this? No, there aren't. There are lots of quadrilaterals that are not squares. Is is what I should have written there. Maybe just equal sides is what I should have put in there. This is just absolute rubbish. Anyway, I hope you get the idea then um, from the, that. In fact, I'm going to remove this just while I outro. Um, I hope you have the idea then um, behind what a necessary and sufficient condition is. 
Um, yeah, I can't stress enough that you do need to get your head around. It is necessary to get your head around this uh, idea in order to be any good at Tamura. It's not sufficient because there are other things that you also need to be good at to be good at Tamura, but it is necessary. Um, so I hope you understand what I mean by that.